Welcome back. Up next, we have Forum Daily's energy update with Dan McTeague, Senior Petroleum Analyst. All yours, Dan. Well, Julie, thank you very much for that. What a week it's been from, uh, you know, uh, the talking heads in Ottawa trying to celebrate uh, the idea that you're going to get a carbon tax rebate uh, uh, quarterly. Uh, I think people have to be reminded that this car carbon tax bribe is nothing more than extortion. What it's basically doing is taking money out of your pocket for heating, for feeding, for driving and doing what you need to do and then giving you back a pittance. And don't take my word for it. The parliamentary budget officer has said that net most Canadians will be uh, worse off as a result of carbon policies, which by the way, speaking in the context of the bigger issue that we saw this week, rising interest rates, well, we have Tiff Macklin, the uh, chairman of the Bank of Canada now saying, you know, um, he wants to see that interest, uh, that inflation doesn't go above 2%. If carbon taxes are rising at higher than the rate of inflation, that 2% target, doesn't this become a bit of a, uh, a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy in the sense that uh, we will never we will never address that? Carbon taxes may actually be paying, playing a very spark, uh, important role in driving up uh, the cost of living. Uh, but not just that. Let's talk about the cost of energy. The cost of energy, which continues to moderate somewhat, but is much higher than it was last year. But of course, the same Tiff Macklin, chair of the uh, Bank of Canada, now says, well, you know, we are can't figure out why the Canadian dollar is not responding and why it's adding uh, to the burden of Canadians who's lost about 35% of their purchase power last time we saw oil trading in these kind of numbers. What he's now saying, of course, is that because we've destroyed pipelines in this country, put regulations on the sector, not allowed Canada to respond to the world's desperate plea for more natural gas and oil, having lost 17 projects of only which one is uh, eventually going to show up in 2025 at Kitimat uh, through the uh, coastal Gulf link, uh, we have to ask ourselves the question, do we really want these elites pushing their climate projects and programs to continue to destroy the future outlook of this country? Because as most are now starting to realize, there is no good economic news coming from Canada and for the foreseeable future, According to RBC, we're heading to a recession. I suspect it's going to be a lot deeper than that. But for now, uh, energy prices will uh, continue to moderate, but they will likely move up to the upside. I think you know, for Vancouver, uh, look for prices to remain in the $2 litre range. For Western Canada, where gas stations are refusing to surrender their rather fat retail margins, normally they can run in 10 to 15 cents a litre. They're now you know, commending as much as 30 and 35 cents. Look for prices to remain. They shouldn't be coming down much, even though they deserve to come down. Ontario, well, you're looking at uh, continuation of prices in the 177 to 180 range. And of course, for Quebec, uh, $1.90. Maritimes, which uh, seem to like this little security blanket of a regulatory price regime, uh, prices go up and down based on the whims of bureaucrats, not on markets who are trying uh, to demonstrate that they are somehow justifying their existence by keeping prices artificially high. That's true of Newfoundland. That was certainly true of Nova Scotia this week that raised diesel prices 11 cents a litre, then dropped it 11 cents a litre because they realized the market wasn't uh, that crazy. And so uh, I guess what it really means is that uh, for the foreseeable future, at least for the next week or so, uh, Julie, we can expect prices to remain where they are. But uh, uh, never a dull moment in uh, Canadian politics. I think uh, we're starting to realize that our fascination, our obsession with climate policies and their effect on destroying Canada's most prosperous uh, energy sector, the oil and gas sector, is now having significant ramifications on every consumer in the country. I'll have more to talk about next week. Let's talk then, and uh, thanks for having me again. We'll see you next week, Julie. Thanks for that, Dan. That was Dan McTeague, Senior Petroleum Analyst at GasWizard.ca. He is also the President of Canadians for Affordable Energy.